right, thanks, Ross, and good morning. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to offer up my, my thoughts and prayers for uh, Colonel Ben Scard and his family. I just heard about that uh, coming out of a meeting here, and um, I didn't know that. But uh, what a what a great what a great man and uh, unbelievable life, uh, and really just a, a honor to uh, to know him. Uh, so, uh, just thoughts and prayers with his family, and um, again life well lived for sure uh, but we're excited about uh, this matchup this week um, you know it's good to be at home again uh, and you know hopefully this week we coming off of a noon game last week uh, hopefully that'll help our guys you know really um, uh, have a good week of preparation this week as far as just the routine because it is a little different in getting yourself ready your clock and all those type of things to play at uh, at noon uh, you know you're, you're Everything's just ramped up, so um, I think that experience will be good for our guys. And uh, you know, last home game, uh, we, we we celebrate all year and work all year to for for these moments. You know, six, seven, you know, games a year, and then we get the spring game. You know, where we open up the valley, so it's just a special uh, place. It's a it's an unbelievable environment to be able to do something that you love to do, and so. Really, just excited to uh, have another opportunity. I hope our crowd will, will come out and and uh, man, come Friday uh, if you can, and uh, you know, pitch a ten or something, and uh, man, let's be ready to go on, on Saturday. It's going to be a this is going to be a, a great matchup. Uh, it's exciting for our guys, um, and uh, you know, just a uh, lot going on with Senior Day this week. Uh, we got some guys that have, have really had great careers and have made great contributions to this program over the last four, five, six years in some cases. Uh, and so taking an opportunity to, to celebrate them, it's, it's always an emotional week. Um, you know, it really is. You know, it's, it's always a little bit sad too, uh, you know, because you know, this is the last time, you know, you're going to get a chance to, for them to play in that stadium. And it's the last time for, for us as coaches to have a chance to, uh, to coach them in that environment. And uh, so you know their career's coming to an end. Uh, but, but it's also exciting because you know that they're well prepared. Uh, you know, these guys that are here, you know, four and five years, uh, I mean, they're, 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 they walk out of here with, with a great foundation for life. Uh, so um, excited to, to be a part of that. I've, I've got a son uh, that's a part of it as well. So. Uh, that's obviously a, a even added thing for me this week, and uh, so you know, again, just looking forward to a, a great day, a great crowd, and I think it's going to be a beautiful day. So uh, should be a good one. Wake Forest, a heck of a team. Uh, it's pretty kind of speaks for itself. They've had a, a magical year. I mean, a really magical year. I think it's um, you know they've been able to stay relatively healthy. I think that's been a, obviously that's a key for everybody. Um, you know, they got a great roster, you know, a bunch of third, fourth, fifth, six-year players that have been really well coached. Uh, they're well developed. Man, Dave has done an awesome job. He, he's, he is just a, he's a, he's become a friend. We've, we, he and I have spent more time together uh, over the last two years uh, than probably any coach that I've been around, whether it's, it, mostly it's been Zoom and conference calls. Uh, so I've really gotten to know him uh, on a much, more personal level over the last couple of years, and he's just done a great job. He he's done a great job from a leadership standpoint, and um, uh, he just happened to have the unlucky straw. You know, we rotate who the co head coach chair is, kind of our of our coaches group. Like we kind of rotates, and he he had the unlucky unlucky rotation of of, of being the guy when when 2020 hit, um, and uh, so but he he did he's done a wonderful job, and he's done a great job with his team. Unbelievably consistent. Uh, there at Wake Forest, uh, they do a great job of, uh, you know, playing to their strengths, and uh, they do a great job with their evaluation and a great job with their development. And I think that's uh, a credit to to Coach Clawson, the job he does, the staff he does. Uh, <clears throat> defensively, you know, they're a good defense. Uh, you know, their stats don't tell the story. This is a good defense. They they do a lot of good stuff. They play hard, uh, and. Uh, you know they they they're very well coached up front. They move around, uh, so I mean we've got to we've got to play well, especially 
with, if you look at us and how we're structured right now offensively, um, I mean, you got you don't have a single senior starting for you uh, with Ross out. Uh, we only have two juniors starting for us in Davis Allen and McFadden because uh, Putnam's reclassifying as a sophomore, and everybody else is freshman and sophomore. So, you know, we're 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 in a we're still in a you know a little bit of a development stage. We're going to start true freshman at receiver, a true freshman at receiver, a true sophomore at receiver. We got another true freshman in there at tight end with with Davis and a couple of freshman backs and a sophomore back. Um, you know, you got uh, Trotter and Rayburn, you know, first year guys really, really getting a chance to play. Uh, first year starter at quarterback. So a lot of, a lot of new pieces there. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is kind of a game of strength on strength if you look at it. You know, we've been really good on defense. They've been really, really good on offense. Uh, we've been inconsistent offensively and uh, kind of uh, not a lot of continuity throughout the year. Uh, but both groups have, have made some strides, their defense, our offense. So I think, I think it's a good matchup. But, you know, they do a good, some good stuff, man. They turn the ball over. They've got 13 different guys on their defense that turn the ball over uh, who have created a turnover. Uh, that just that's, that kind of jumps out at you. Um, they, they do a great job with their scheme. They know how to execute it. Um, and uh, so, you know, good, uh, good matchup there. And then offensively, I mean, they're a handful. I mean, they're, they're a handful with what the, you know, their scheme. Their scheme is, is, is different. It's unique. Um, and that creates some challenge. We're fortunate that we play them every year. I think that's a, a, a positive for us, uh, as opposed to some teams that don't see them every year because it is, it is different, it is unique. Uh, but at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, the experience they got. They got, you know, 96% of their team back from last year offensively, and they're really good. They know how to play. They know how to execute. The quarterback is, is a uh, savvy, uh, relentless competitor. I mean, he's a great leader. Uh, uh, their offensive line has a ton of cohesion. Uh, they, they really understand what they're doing. They play really, really fast. You know, they play really fast. They don't do a lot of motioning and things. They line up and they go. The ball gets snapped quick. Uh, and, uh, you know, they've got three running backs that are, that are all good players. Uh, they rotate them all. they got two tight ends that are really good players. Um, but it's this quarterback – and, and, and that offensive line, the cohesion of that offensive line, and then it's these receivers. These, these, are, the, these are the best receivers that we've played uh, as a group all year, you know, as a group and, and fundamentally and technically, uh, you know, how they play. They, they lead the country in passes of 30 plus yards. Uh, they're number one in the country. So tons of big plays through the pass game, uh, whether it be just making competitive plays on the ball or double moves. Uh, you know, they put a lot of stress on you coverage-wise because of, you know, how, how, they, how they force you to play, uh, you know, with, with their scheme. So, you know, we got to do a great job outside. We got to win matchups. Uh, it's not real complicated. You know, you got to win, the, you gotta win on the ball. Um, simple as that. Our linebackers got to do a great job, you know, sorting through the RPO stuff. And then and our defensive line has to, has to play really well. I mean, we've got to be disruptive up front. Uh, we can't let them get in rhythm. And uh, that's, that's a, a huge key to this game. But they do a great job. Uh, again, across the board, they're the only team in the country to score 35 plus points every single game. Um, so very consistent in what they do, regardless of who they play, regardless of the style of defense that they see. They've been really, really consistent. And again, it goes back to this quarterback, uh, his total control of the offense cohesion of the group up front, and then their big play capability outside. A lot of big plays. Um, and you go to sleep on these backs, uh, they, they'll bust you uh, because, you know, they, they do, they're all three good. Uh, so it's a good group, a good matchup. Their kicker is, I think he's, I think he's going to leave as the most accurate guy in the history of the NCAA. I think that's a fact. Uh, he's like 89% in his career. And if he finishes out that way, I think he could be actually the most accurate guy ever in the history of the NCAA. Uh, did I say NFL? Uh, I don't know if I said that or not, but he's going to the NFL. Uh, so just a good group, man. Good, good, good team and uh, not, not very shocking, you know, that they've been able to have the success they've had. So it should be a great matchup. Obviously, they're, they're in control of their destiny uh, from, a, from a division standpoint. For us, man, we're trying to stay, stay alive. So 
Uh, we're, we're a wounded dog on the side of the road, man. We, we need a little help, uh, but we're still alive, you know. Uh, we're still alive. So this is a huge game for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, and, uh, you know, giving us – because at the end of the day, you, you just want to have a chance. And, and we have fought back, and I'm proud of our team. You know, we've won five out of six. We've won three in a row. Uh, these kids have competed their butts off all year. Uh, hadn't always been pretty, uh, but they've played to the last play uh, every single game and have been in position to win every game. Uh, so just really proud of uh, our team, their will to win, and, uh, you know, want to see them finish well. Wounded dog. I, I don't, have you updated Sergio Allen? What happened he, with him? We got a great report on him. Uh, we, we, we were not very optimistic uh, with him, but uh, it turned out it was not, it was more his, they thought it was his knee. It was more like a, 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 a ligament that comes up from your calf or something. And uh, so that was a real positive. And his ankle, he rolled his ankle pretty bad too. So, but he, he's going to heal up. So we were really, really fortunate because uh, it did not look good uh, on the field. So that was a blessing. We didn't know till Sunday uh, they, when they got the MRI back. Justin will be out. Yeah, Justin's out, you know, and, and um, it's, you know, probably going to go ahead and do surgery Thursday. Um, and, you know, let me just say this about Justin, and this is, this is, uh, it's just who he is. I mean, this kid, so he, he right before we played Georgia, uh, I know there was a lot of uh, rumors saying he broke his foot or whatever, uh, and he didn't break his foot. He had a, a very, very, very slight uh, hairline area near his fifth metatarsal. Uh, you know, not something that, you know, like broken foot, you go put it in a cast, you know, type of deal. But he had a very, very thin deal, which when I, when I fir cause first heard that, I was like, oh, man, that's not good. He's going to be out for four or five weeks. Um, uh, or three to five weeks, you know, fix it. And but uh, he was like, I think I can play, and and the doctors felt like he could play or at least try it. And I was like, Well, we'll just have to see where he is. And so uh, he really only hurt. He he hurt the Georgia game, and the South Carolina State game, and outside of that, you know, because he, he was on the bone stimulator and all. So he did all this treatment. He's been treating all year. He's had no problems. I mean, it's amazing. It was amazing. Uh, that he was able to go play 10 games. So, uh, and, and just that one last play, because he's played with a plate in his shoe and different things, and, it's, and he's not really had any issues, you know. Uh, he rolled his other ankle. That's about the only other issue that he's had. Uh, but that one play, you know, it was, a, it was a great play, and there was a bunch of guys around him, and he just somehow, he just tweaked it just a little bit. Uh, so, you know, uh, where we are now, I mean, and we may wait and see where he is Monday. Um, and just see if he's if he's better and maybe can finish. Uh, but you know, uh, right now our plan is to probably go ahead and do it. Uh, you know, unless he feel, we're going to see where he is tomorrow. Um, so because he, he's got a, he's going to have to just they'll just put a little screw in there and, and he'll be fine in, in a few weeks. But uh, you know, one of the worst days of my coaching career uh, since I've been a coach since 1993. Uh, was the day that the doctors showed up in my office unannounced uh, and we had to get Justin and his mom and tell him that it's most likely he's not going to play football anymore. That was, that was a bad day. Uh, when I, it's just etched in my mind forever. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> man, I'm just, I'm just so thankful for Dr. Okonkwo. I'm just so thankful that there's people like this, like that, on this planet. Because the, you know, the, most of the doctors said you can't play. That's what, you know, you know, we all these doctors, he's done. I won't clear him. Never play. Shut him down. And then this guy, Dr. Okonkwu, who was the doctor with Shazir or whatever uh, from the Steelers, he's like, you know, I'm not. I think that's the easy answer. I'll never forget the first conversation I had with this guy when he was doing, getting ready to do the surgery. He's like, I think it's, he said, it's good likelihood he won't play. It's, I would say it's maybe 50-50, but I'm not ready to say that. I think there's a path. And I mean, and, and I remember going up there and, and he had his surgery and I met with him after surgery. I said, well, how'd you do? Was it seven and five? 
six and six, ten and two, and he's like fifteen and zero. Oh. And I and I was just like, wow. He said it was great. Everything went great, and if he'll just do what I ask him to do, it's still an uphill battle, and I'd say it's fifty fifty, but I think he's got a chance. And uh, and so for eighteen nineteen months, you know, watching this kid. Uh, go through what he went through and I mean this is Justin Ross man I mean this isn't you know Dabo Sweeney's career being shut down I mean this is a this is a guy that is is uh, capable of playing at the highest level and uh, man it was just uh, again one of the worst days of my coaching career and then one of the greatest days of my coaching career is watching him return to play and, uh, and I told him that after the Georgia game. You know, because he made a couple mistakes in the Georgia game. And I told him, I said, hey, I'm just thankful you were here to make those mistakes. And uh, what a blessing. So one of the greatest blessings of my life has been able to watch Justin Ross play football for the last 10 games. And to watch him practice, and watch him prepare, watch him compete. And uh, man, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful. And then, and then I, and then I you know, when we got that news before the Georgia, I'm thinking, God, you got to be kidding me. This kid's not going to be able to play. That was my first thought. And then not only did he play, but he played well. And in the last three or four games were his best games. Uh, and I'm just – and he had some doubt. He had some fear, you know, that he had to push through and overcome coming off of, you know, 19 months of not playing football. And not only did he play 10 games, man, he's flying around the field. He's leaping, jumping. Uh, flipping, uh, blocking, you know, and it just, it just, he just, what his, his commitment to this team, his commitment to this university and this program, I mean, it's, it's been amazing to watch. And uh, so uh, if that's his last play, uh, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he was able to come back and play and uh, uh, again, play 10 games and, uh, show everybody what he can do and get his confidence where it needs to be and, and we'll get him well and, and go from there. But um, but he's definitely out. Ennis, Skalski, some of the others. Ennis, is, Ennis is, 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 Skalski will be fine. Ennis is, is limited right now. Uh, so Brenny, Brenny's got to go. Uh, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been making a lot of progress and excited about his development. Uh, obviously, we got Shipley and Kobe back. Uh, that's a big shot for us. And going to get Putnam back. So that's that's a big plus for us, too. He's missed a couple of games. Uh, so getting him back going will be a, will be a positive as well. So uh, we're going to need we're gonna need everybody. And we got to go play well. But, you know, we got got some young guys uh, in some spots that, that got to step up. And, and uh, we got to do a great job getting them ready. How's DJ feeling at this point? Are you going to limit him? Uh, he looked good last night. You know, he looked good. Uh, so, I mean, he's got to go play. DJ? Yeah, practice. Absolutely. Did that cause any? Yeah, he, he did. He, 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 got a, he did bang his hand, but he, he was fine. I mean, he's no problem. Practice yesterday. Looked good. Tyson was sore yesterday. He, he, he did not practice, so. Hopefully he can. Hopefully he he can ramp up each day, uh, but he's he's working through a little bit of the uh, shoulder issue. But he, you know, it was mild, but you know he's a quarterback, uh, so he's got to he's got to work through that. And I think he'll get better, but we'll see where he is by by Wednesday Thursday. Well, it'll be special. It's always special, you know, because I, I look at every one of these guys as my son, and you really, that's how you look at them. I mean, I, I, I try to coach them that way and uh, love my guys. And, man, these guys that, that come down that hill, you know, because I know they're going to be graduates, number one. That's what everything in this program is about graduation. And, uh, you know, you'll have a couple of guys that, that are graduating that may have eligibility left. But, but you know, they, they, they probably won't be here next year. But. Man, they've they've earned the right to be honored as seniors because they're graduating, 
and I'm proud of that, and that's what we celebrate here. Um, but, yeah, you know, for me, it, 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 it's a special, even more special with Will uh, because he's literally grown into a man on that field, like, like literally. Uh, you know, on that he has grown from a little bitty boy to a to a to a, a great young man uh, on that field. And you know, you talk about a kid who loves this university, who loves this program, who who lives and dies and always has with with every every game uh, as coaches families do. Uh, it's just been awesome. He's a great student. You know, he's he's going to graduate with his MBA uh, this summer. Um, you know, I, it's been one of my greatest joys, you know, because he's a grinder. He just loves to, he loves to compete. He loves to work to be his best. He's, he's just an incredibly committed kid in every aspect and super proud of him. And uh, same thing with Drew. And uh, his, his day will come as well uh, next year or the year after, depending on whatever he decides to do. Ben, is he planning on coming back? Or? He's going to come back. So he'll be our he'll be our only senior next year. Uh, he and Davis, uh, it's crazy. I mean, it really is. When you look at <laughs> you look at, I mean, we literally have one senior. I mean, no seniors starters, and we have two juniors in Davis and, and McFadden. It's just it's just it's the craziest thing I've ever ever been a part of. So you've got five offensive linemen that that are out for the year, uh, five receivers, you know, scholarship receivers that are out for the year. Obviously, Galloway uh, as a tight end. Uh, um, you know, had a couple backs move on, so it's been a it's been a crazy year uh, from a you know and crazy and like there's really nothing. It's just, and most of the injuries happen in games. You know, we, we've had some some really crazy things, but um, but it's going to pay off for us because we got a lot of guys, you know, that's going to be back, and uh, plus we're going to add on. So we'll have a lot more, of a lot more of an experienced group offensively next year, and we're going to have a very experienced group defensively again next year too. You know, because we got a lot of guys that have played and a lot of guys coming back uh, defensively that I'm really excited about. I mean, our secondary, we got a bunch of those guys back and guys, and we got and we got we got some guys coming in that are going to really help us. Uh, we got most of those D linemen are back, um, so you know XT and. You know, we'll obviously be moving on, and um, you know, hopefully KJ and Mask will be back. But they might be guys that have to make a decision, uh, depending on what their what their grade is and stuff like that. But um, we got a lot of guys that have really benefited from some experience this year uh, that I think will serve us well. Chapman, there was a time when that slow mesh <coughs> way for us didn't work very well against you guys because the defensive line just like collapsed it. Feel like your guys can sort of change the line of scrimmage in that fashion. Well, I hope so. I mean, you know, but you, you also they've had a group of young guys that are now, you know, more experienced players. Uh, they got a quarterback that really has bought into what they do. I think that's a part of it. You know, he's not a guy that hates what they do. He loves what they do, and and I think everything kind of feeds off of that. And then they, they've just had a lot of consistent success. And so that just kind of breeds confidence uh, in it. But um, I mean, that's the battle. I mean, we got to win the line of scrimmage. Same, they got to win the line of scrimmage. If they're going to beat us, they got to win the line of scrimmage. And uh, they got to win the competitive plays. If we're going to win, we got to win the line of scrimmage. We got to win the competitive plays. That's what this game comes down to. You said Will Putnam reclassified as a sophomore. So have you had a discussion with him about it's going to be another two years? Or have you figured out like 2022, 2023 recruiting in terms of? No, back? nobody's figured out that. Uh, there's there's not a coach on the planet that's figured out recruiting. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, no, that's what he's expressed to Robbie is that he's one of those guys that want, wants that year back. And he played, you know, he had played a little bit as a freshman. So I think he I think he wants that the opportunity to have that year, which is great. You know, we, we certainly would love that, but there's nobody that's figured out uh, 23 recruiting. There's very few that have figured out 22. Uh, we, we feel like we're in a good place, you know, roster wise right now where we sit and who's, who we, who we're recruiting, you know, we, we, our numbers, we're going to be right there. 
like for example, our number in the OL is 15. You know, we, we're we're gonna right now we'll probably sign two guys. We're gonna be at 15. Uh, we'll be right at our number. You know, but something could change next week. Uh, something could change tonight uh, in college football. So, you know, uh, it's still it's fluid in recruiting. Nobody's got it figured out anymore as far as where you can project, okay, our 23 class, here's where we are. Because you got a couple issues. You don't know how your current roster is going to shape out because you, you could pretty much say, okay, you might have an attrition of a couple at a place like Clemson, but it's different now uh, and it's different everywhere. Uh, that's one issue. And the other issue is you got COVID, you know, all the way through, is it 24 or 5, whatever year it is, that you've got to manage that because we don't get any relief. They, everybody's got to count. This year it didn't matter, right? You know, so all these guys, Skowski, they didn't count against our their, – so you, we had 92 scholarships or whatever. Uh, but next year, if somebody comes back for a COVID year, they got to be in your 85. So how do you know? It's kind of hard to go to a guy and say, hey, in uh, December of 23, do you think you're going to want to come back? You know, are you kidding me? These kids don't know where they're going to – which pizza place they want to go to uh, this weekend? You know, I mean, it's so it's a it's a it's a crazy world. I've never in my life thought I would experience anything like it. Uh, when I first got into coaching, we didn't we didn't offer anybody till like January. You didn't sign anybody till January of their senior year. Uh, that's it. You know, you never knew. I mean, you didn't, nobody committed either. There were no commitments. You just kind of recruited, and you, so you'd have to recruit all these guys. And then you'd figure it out in January. That's when you figure it all out. And so it's just very different now because – and then you have the, – with the transfer portal, you have all these high school kids because they're getting pushed to the side because a lot of schools aren't going to sign high school kids, which is sad. A lot of schools aren't going to sign them. And so now that you have all these high school kids that are, that are, that are trying to be mid-years so that they can have spots because you have some coaches that go, okay – well, man, I can sign this mid this kid right here out of the portal. He can be here in January. If I sign this high school kid, he can't come to the summer. So now you got all these high school kids trying to be mid years so that they don't get you know they can compete with the portal. So it's a it's a it's a, it's a wild world, you know. Like even, you know, we're gonna probably have I don't know twelve to fourteen mid years that'll show up here in January. That's what's coming in here, and we'll have a few guys that'll show up in the summer. But most of them are mid-years now. And, I, and, and, again, that's going to be more and more and more and more because the high school kids want an opportunity to compete with kids coming out of the portal. So nobody's figured it out. It's a, it's a, it's a daily, daily uh, fluid situation. I didn't draw the short straw to ask you about the transfer portal this week, I promise. <laughs> But people are under the assumption that you've, you've said, I will never use it, I don't want to use it. But you've never said that. I've never said that. And if you if you ran into a situation where you lost an offensive lineman in the yeah. spring, but a perfect situation, a fifth-year graduate that would come along that maybe fit, that wouldn't disrupt it. Yeah. I, I, there's not a school in the country that's not going to have to recruit the portal. That's what's been created. There's not a school anywhere. Everybody – is you know, in Division One football, is going to have to deal with the portal some form or fashion because you're going to have gaps in your roster, you know, somewhere because you know for, again, they have until May one to say, hey, I'm out, and that's the world we've created now. You know, it's just it's what the, that's the way it is. Um, I mean, I don't like it, but that's the way the world is. So you just deal with it. Uh, but they have until May 1. So you have guys leave after spring or in the spring semester. Um, you, you, the next thing, you're going to have mid-years leave. You know, you're going to have mid-years show up at all these schools. And they go, ah, I don't like it. Dang, I'm 13. Oh, Matt Drills, they yelled at me. They're going to leave. So guess what? Who, you, there's no high school kids to sign in May. Where are you going to get high school kids in May? There aren't any. There's, they didn't exist. And so – there's no barriers anymore in college football. There's no reason for pause. There isn't. It's just, you know, ready, shoot, aim. You know, there's no, there's no 
none of that anymore. So uh, what do you, you don't have any other choice now. So I don't think we'll have, we'll be, we'll deal with it like everybody, but we won't be as affected as a lot of these programs, you know, because uh, just who we are. I mean, it'll still be different for us, and, and hopefully we don't have to. Uh, but we're not going to just do it to do it. Uh, it's got to be strategic. It's got to be the right fit. It's got to be the same criteria and things like that. And I think, too, kids that are going in the portal, they want to go be starters. Nobody wants to come be the third team running back at Clemson. If you know of any of those guys, let me know. All right? They want to come be the fourth team running back at Clemson. Let me know who those guys are. The grad transfer, there ain't many of those. Uh, most kids are in the portal, and that's the sad part. You're gonna have a lot of kids in the portal, and they're they're not gonna. There's nowhere for them to go. And uh, so, you know, but that's where we are. And there's not a single school in America that won't have to deal with it. Um, but when it happens, it'll be one of the greatest days in the history of Clemson. When we, you know, Grace will love it. She'll write a great article about our first ever portal. We'll track his DNA, and we'll. we'll meet his aunt and uncles, and it'll be the greatest moment ever. And he better be a player. <laughs> Tony was saying yesterday one of the unfortunate parts of players deciding to leave during the season is that they can just sort of – there doesn't even have to be a conversation with the coach. They can just go straight to the phone. Yeah. And has, has that been the case here? When you have Peace players? out. Nice knowing you. Uh, I've talked to all my guys. Yeah, I've talked to all these guys. Uh, you know, and it's just maybe they just want a different opportunity and, and they want to have time to figure it out because they want to be somewhere in January. So that's this that's going to happen every day, every day between now and the end of the season, somebody's going in the portal. Every day, somewhere, every day. And, and eventually people are going to quit just commenting on it because uh, it's the norm. There will be kids that will – Go in the portal after two games. Uh, there's going to be kids that go in the portal that are playoff teams. Uh, it's just the way it is. That's the that's the world. That's been, it's, it's not. It, it's an unintended consequence, but that's that's what we're dealing with. I've never ruled it out. I've never. I've just said I'm not, we don't. We've, we've not had to use it. We've not had to use the portal. Uh, we have not. We've not had a need. We've been at our number, and uh, so, you know, we, it's not been a. It's not been a, a need for us. But this is the first cycle, where you have where like any time in the past when we've known we've known guys that were leaving, and we've addressed it in the recruiting on the front end. Like we we knew. Uh, Whereas, um, uh, like last year, I knew Niles and, and Jordan were leaving. I knew, you know, you, you know these, some of these things. Um, but and you address it. But this is, again, the first full cycle where there is nowhere to address it. And, and, I've, and I've, I've actually, you know, I signed uh, uh, a quarterback from Stanford. I don't know if you all remember that. Everybody, yeah, everybody said he was going to come in here and win the job. You know, I, I told him up front, you're going to be my scout team quarterback. I need a scout team quarterback. I need a fourth team guy. And he wanted to get back to South Carolina. So, you know, I mean, I don't, there was no portal, but he was, a, he was a grad transfer that came in here, and he was awesome. At that time, he was thinking about getting into coaching. You know, he wasn't looking to come in here and be the starter at Clemson. He wanted to come in here and be a part of our program, learn our culture. You know, he's thinking about being in coaching, and he was great. He was awesome, uh, and he'd had great experience out at Stanford as a backup guy. Uh, so again, you know, I think the worst thing you can do is you get a guy that that that's not good enough to be a starter for you, and you're not on the same page there. Uh, so that's the only grad guy, and we've had guys walk on. We've had. Lots of guys that walk on here throughout the year that graduate from other places or they transfer to Clemson and they try out and they want to walk on. We've had a bunch of those type of kids. Um, but, yeah, everybody, everybody's going to have to use it at some point. Is there anybody you've coached that, I 
I guess, would you watch A.T. Perry on film for what he that sort of is a good comparison there? Uh, man, he's long. He's explosive. He's got a ton of wiggle to him. I mean, he's got a little T. Higgins in him, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I just he's, – he's a he's – a, he is really developed, man. I mean, he is a really good player, really good player. I think he was 89 last year, and now he's in nine. Uh, man, he's 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 just uh, uh, we've had some guys that he's similar to in a lot of aspects, but he's he's just long, fast, uh, excellent ball skills, but he's 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 very maneuverable. You know, he's got great great quickness, great lateral uh, ability, explosive out of his cuts. You know, uh, you don't see many big guys that, that can that can do that. So, I just think he's a I think he's an excellent player. Five is a really I mean nine averages twenty yards a catch. Uh, I think five averages about seventeen yards a catch. You know, so that's two first downs every time they touch it. Uh, and then man, you better not you better not sleep on that dead gum eighty three. He's a baller. Uh, he let him remember. See, he had nine catches on us last year in a touchdown. I mean, he's a really good player. A really good player, very crafty. He's more of the slot, you know, the inside guy. He's going to catch some of those inside routes and ball control routes. And but he's really good at the top of his route, you know, with his break points and creating separation. Very good with his influence. He's good. He's a good little player. He's a good player. I mean, it's triple option football. That's all it is. I mean, it's just triple option. They're, they, they're triple option like Louisville. They, Louisville has their own unique pistol, triple option type of attack. And and Wake has their own unique triple option type of attack because there's a lot of decision making going on. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's different. It's different. But they got all the spread components. Uh, they just – do it in a way, and, and most spread teams have option principles, you know, built into it. You know, especially if you got a, a quarterback that that that's a, uh, can run, you know, because it's it's handoff, it's run, it's pull, it's pass. I mean, you got a lot of things going on, um, and uh, that's been going on for for quite a while now. But but Wake's just unique in in their approach. Uh, so again, that's that's why I'm glad we play them every year. Uh, because it's it is it's triple option. This, this, there's a lot that can happen on one play, a lot, you know, from the handoff to the quarterback run, to next thing you know, there's a post route over the top of you. Um, there's a lot, lot involved. So it just you know you got to play with option principles defensively. Several. I mean, you know, when, when you you know, when you're just walking. Uh, you can you can put your eyes on multiple things. There's plays where he's got a guy over here and a guy over here that he that he's looking at. And the biggest thing is he just knows where everybody is. And he, and you know they're guys they do a great job. You know they don't really go to the second level very much. You don't really see that. They're they're pretty much at the line of scrimmage. You know uh, they build a wall and you, they don't really come off. You know uh, so. What do you you know if you, if you bring unless you plug a backer, and he's just got time to kind of to kind of see all these things, and so you have to disrupt that. You have to disrupt it. You have to take away the easy access throws, and you know you got to win that matchup up front. You you you, you got to you can't let him have. I mean, there's times where it's four plus seconds or more that he's got the ball. That's. Yeah, you know, when I was coming up, if you didn't have that ball gone by 1.8 seconds, maybe two, maybe 2.4, your butt was on the ground. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of where football has always been played. And they've, they've, they've changed that to where if you really look at it, I mean, there's times where he's got the ball four-plus seconds. And uh, so it's a unique. It's very unique. Correct. I thought you were going to say, obviously, that can't happen. I was going to correct you. Uh, so, 
you you were absolutely correct with your finishing of that sentence there. Uh, yeah, we got to win. Like I said, we're a wounded dog on the side of the road. We need some help, man. We need somebody to pick us up and bandage us up, give us give us some new life. As I mean, we we we're still alive. We're still alive, but if we don't win this game, we're not. If we win the game, you know, it's gonna go all the way down to the last day. Uh, but you know, you know, so that's certainly a part of this game. We want to finish six and two in the league. That would be a great finish for this team. I mean, this would be six out of seven. This would be four in a row. Um, this would this would be. I mean, we've talked about the the seniors, man. We we haven't had back to back senior classes leave Clemson undefeated since 1940, 1941, and that's one of those things you go, like, you just go, wow, like, that's a long time, you know. I mean, Robbie Caldwell wasn't wasn't alive in in 1940, 1941. All right, that's a long time. Uh, that's a long time. I mean, and you know why it's a long time? Because it's hard to win. There's a reason why it's been since 1940, 1941. Back-to-back -back senior classes rolling out of here undefeated. We we could have five years in a row without losing a game at home. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of opportunity in this game. You know, this is a, this is a, again the best we can be is nine and three, and you can't win nine until you go win, whatever eight. Okay, so, uh, but but definitely. The division is still out there for us. Uh, if we don't take care of business, you know, they'll be the division champs. And uh, so we got to, and, and, and if we take care of business, they still got a chance, you know, but they got to go do it and we'll be done. We'll be, we'll be six and two and it'd be a heck of a finish for this group uh, with the type of season that we've had and the amount of challenges these guys have had to deal with. Proud of them, man. Their will to win has been awesome all year this team. I mean, it's been a fun team. I've really enjoyed them. And, uh, you know, I love these seniors. And you just, you know, what a cool thing to be able to walk off the field, you know, and say you never lost a home game. That's that's pretty cool. In college football, there's not many people that can say that. That's really, really hard. And I think those, I think the 40-41 team, I think, I think they only played like two home games a year, you know. Literally, I maybe mean, Bray can tell me. I think they were building Death Valley, and I guess they needed money, so they played a bunch of away games or something, and they only played like two home games a year. So, it, not to take anything away from the 1940-41 group, but I think they only had to go eight and zero uh, or something like that. You know, this bunch is this bunch has had to win a bunch of them. It's been pretty cool. In the um, spirit of me writing random stories. Um, <laughs> Your Monday night call-in show when Becky from Gaffney is upset about the Bubble play Becky? calling. <laughs> Someone else is upset about the odd fronts defensively. Just what is that part of your job like at 8 p.m. on Monday? Oh, I look forward to it. I love talking to, to – I mean, I get – you know, I have the, my, my every week callers. I'm just, do y'all listen to that? It's riveting radio. Y'all have to listen, right? You know, that's what's great. Y'all have so much better things to do on Monday night, but you have to listen because – you just don't know what scoop you're going to get on the Monday night radio show. Isn't that right, Qual? I mean, you need, you just, if you miss it, then your fans are mad at you because you didn't get it on Tuesday morning or whatever. So I love the fact, Grace, that you are somewhere <laughs> sipping on a glass of wine on a Monday night <laughs> listening to the call in show. It's riveting radio. <laughs> Is that unique, though, you think, to college sports and just like this? dynamic yeah well I mean at, at the end of the day it's about I mean you have to engage with your fans I mean you know you're not gonna always very seldom will you agree with your fans I mean this is what I do for a living every day uh and you know it's you know but I think that's what makes college football fun that's what makes it unique I've always enjoyed that um I I, I love conversation I don't have any problem with questions or, or whatever um uh, but you know, I got my my usuals. You know, Lester. You can count on Lester. You can count on Billy, and and his wife in the background. Go Tigers! You know, uh, you know we're gonna get Michael. I'm gonna get a couple kids. You know, from time to time. And I got North Star Tiger from Minnesota. I mean, I got I got all kind of 
all kind of people that call in. I and I love it. I enjoy it. And then you get some, you get some 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 um, some good questions, and it's just good to have conversation, you know, with, with your fans and to be accessible. Uh, now I've always tried to to do that as much as uh, as much as I possibly can. So it's good. I enjoy it. Probably, probably, probably no question. Y'all have your, 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 you know, somebody's uh, contracted with Becky and uh, Becky, <laughs> Becky, ask him this. And then you get the little boy, the 11 year old kid coming in and you know, the dad's going to ask him this. Like, why? Uh, so uh, you get, you get all that, but I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. And I enjoy you guys, believe it or not. I like all y'all. Uh, everybody's got a job to do. You know, occasionally I get a little frustrated with you uh, when I don't think you're fair, but, you know, uh, I think it's good. Speaking of fair, you voted in the top 25 polls in the past. Do you, I know you really don't care, but would you vote Clemson as a top 25 team? Seven wins? Absolutely. Absolutely. No question. I didn't vote this year, though. That's the first time in my head coaching career I opted out. I opted out of that. Uh, 13 years of doing that, you know, because uh, you know all the drama last year that was just a distraction from my team. That, you know, you know, based on what I felt, uh, so just something I could just eliminate because it don't matter anyway. Who cares? Do you, do you feel like that people are, are maybe, hey, Clemson's down? Uh, why would this team not be getting votes? Even I mean, I think uh, it just comes with who we are as a program and you know nobody wants to give our opponents any credit uh i mean georgia's pretty good they're pretty good i mean i think we played them pretty good probably scored the fewest only scored three points on us we scored the other seven um nc state pretty good pretty good team at their place double overtime you know uh pit they're pretty good at their place had our chance to win it uh, you know, so I, I think it's more Clemson stinks as opposed to the opponents are good, and I, I don't. I think that's just something that just kind of comes with who we are as a program. But whether that's fair or not, I, I you know, I, I just, I just think, you know, we lost to some good teams that were better than us that day.